what's going on YouTube? My name's Lucas. Thanks so much for checking out my video and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to be doing a quick video that's going to kind of give you an overview of the basics of vocal tuning and how that process goes. And we're also going to be talking about Auto-Tune and Melodyne as well, which are the two most popular plugins for doing that. So I get questions about this all the time from my students, so I really wanted to demystify a few things. So we're going to get right into it here. If you find this information useful, uh, definitely let me know in the comments or not so I can make better videos because at the end of the day, I just want it to be useful for people. And uh, subscribe if you find this helpful as well. So I just typed up a little quick outline here just to go over a couple things before I get into the software. But who is this video for? Um, so we're going to be talking about stuff that relates to beginner through intermediate intermediate level students songwriters music producers audio engineers mix engineers vocalists so if you're a singer as well as aspiring vocal producers and music artists as well so if you're an artist and you're trying to make your music uh, from start to finish this applies to you the next thing I want to discuss is what this video is going to be not about. So uh, if you're looking for this type of information, you're going to have to look elsewhere. But I'm not going to be doing a video manual of any of the plugins. So I'm not going to be discussing every single little key feature because we, that would take forever. And I would do that in separate videos anyway. Um, I'm not going to be discussing all the details of each subscription that they offer. You're going to have to go on the website and sort of review all those details on your own. And the reason is because it's changing so often, to be honest, it's totally different right now than it was when I first bought Autotune and Melodyne. And uh, they changed the names and all this stuff. So that's really something that um, it, it may not stay current um, it, by the time you see this video. So that's going to be something you're going to have to research on your own. But I'll sort of go over it a, a little bit briefly. Um, and the third thing is I'm not selling you anything. So um, pretty simple. And then the next thing is why listen to me? Um, don't listen to me. Actually, you should do research uh, you know, through multiple sources and uh, watch some other videos and read about it online. But one of the reasons why I'm making this video is because I found a lot of BS videos about this topic on the internet and I wanted to create something that I feel like has a much more pragmatic approach to understanding how to get into these types of things. Um, I'm qualified to talk about this because I've been using these plugins for about 20 years at this point, um, and I've learned through trial and error. I didn't go to school or anything. I literally have been recording with singers or by myself um, for years and have failed miserably and also succeeded. So it's taken some time, and I've done these things both in, like at a bedroom production level as well as professional commercial sessions. So um, I just wanted to make a video that would help you avoid a bunch of BS that I dealt with when I was purchasing these and learning how to do vocal tuning because it's a little bit of a compli complicated topic. Um, and lastly, just some prerequisites about this. So I really think if you're serious about doing music and you want to get better and understand how all this stuff works, the first thing that you really need to know is you need to understand all 12 keys and modes. So there's 12 keys in this circle of fifths and each key has seven modes. Um, we're just talking about the basic diatonic ones uh, related to the major scale and the minor scale. You need to understand the basics of music theory to really be able to do this. Uh, the second thing that you need is some basic keyboard skills because everything on Autotune and Melodyne and just in the DAW in general, as you know, is displayed as like a keyboard view. So you have to understand how the keyboard works. Um, the third thing is you definitely need to be willing to sing or have basic vocal skills or just have a singer that you're collaborating with. So that's kind of a no brainer. I think everyone should start singing if especially if you're into production and a musician is just another thing that you can uh, work on that will help everything about your music. Um, and then number four is you obviously need a basic recording setup with a microphone interface and all that. And number five, this is super key. You just need experience. You just need to do it a lot, as much as you can. Um, it will take years, but um, you know, one of the things I caution people, like if you're if you're looking for someone to do vocal tuning for you um, and things like that, it's like you can't, you don't just wake up one day and just buy Auto Tune and Melodyne and all of a sudden become a vocal producer or a vocal tuning person. It takes years of experience, and you really need to know what you're doing. And uh, there's just no way around that. So you just have to get started. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you. You can definitely learn a ton, uh, you know, just in a couple of days or a couple of weeks of doing this. But, uh, you know, real proper producers and vocal producers and, and uh, artists and, and people that have really been seasoned with this have spent many years uh, getting their sound dialed in and they understand all the ins and outs. That's just kind of the quick overview for this video. And now we're going to hop right into Ableton. So let's do it. 
Okay, so real quick, I just wanted to go over some of the different versions of Auto-Tune. It is a little out of the scope of the video, but just for the sake of being very thorough. So the full-on version is called Auto-Tune Pro X now. Um, I believe you can buy it or subscribe to any of these too. They have like an unlimited bundle where you can get all these plugins. Their website's really confusing, a little hard to understand. That's part of the reason why I wanted to do this. Um, the next level down that they offer is Auto-Tune Artist. So this is more optimized for live performance and tracking. And one thing that I should also note is that if you use UA D Apollo interfaces, there is a version of Autotune that you can get that runs right from console as well. So if you're doing live, I would actually check that one out too, because you can have even lower latency if you're using your Apollo. And Autotune EFX is actually, I really like this one. So it uses quite a bit less CPU power. So if you have a lot of tracks, um, it's wonderful. And it has a nice little keyboard set up at the bottom. So this one's good if you maybe just don't want to spend as much money or don't feel like you're gonna really need all the features of the full on model. They have another even uh, cheaper version called Autotune Access, which is the easy way to get into Autotune. So after that, then there's these all these other plugins that they're trying to sell you that um, actually they make really good plugins. So check them out. But I don't own the rest of these. But so it looks like there's a vocoder. And then there's also Auto Key, which came for free with my version of Autotune. But this will scan your beat for the key of the song. Um, so they offer quite a few different things. And then for Melodyne, um, it's a little bit easier to understand, but basically we have Essential Assistant and Melodyne 5 Editor, which is the full on model. So obviously pretty expensive uh, for just one plugin. I have Melodyne Assistant. So just read about all this and make sure you're aware of the different features. You definitely don't need the full blown version to get going with this. These programs are very expensive, especially if you're subscribing to, don't be fooled by subscriptions. If you're paying a subscription, it really adds up over the course of months and years and you don't need unless you're like running a professional studio i really don't think you need the full-on version so i don't even have the full-on version for some of these so all right so here we are in ableton i'm just going to play the song that we're working on right now the artist's name is cam avery i'll leave a link to his ig and uh, there's no pitch cushion on this so you'll just hear what it sounds like it's just one track of vocals it's just a demo it's i figured it was perfect for this video so check it out to know what you expect out of me especially when you act out of fear won't let you take it out, out on me because you're not even here Cool, so the first thing I wanted to demystify about using Autotune and Melodyne is you can get great results on singers that are very experienced, and you can also get great results on singers that are either not as experienced or maybe just not quite as focused on laying down a really perfect pitches. Um, so. You know, Autotune and Melodyne is not just for correcting singers that sound terrible. You can get amazing results uh, with super talented singers and just kind of use it as a tool to adjust and dial in a few things to get that polish that you're looking for. So we're going to start with Autotune. And the first version I'm going to use that I have is this EFX, which I think is a great place for people to start because it's a little bit more streamlined. So the first thing you need to do is you need to uh, put in the input type. So I put low male, but if you have a soprano or a different type of singer, you select it. And uh, I know that this is an E minor because I played the guitar. And I'll just show you what this sounds like so you can get an idea. There's two main knobs, the retune speed and the humanize. So as you crank retune speed up this way closer to zero, it retunes it more quickly. And humanize is used for humanizing the longer notes the singer holds out. So if you want there to be a little bit more of a natural um, sound to it so it's not squashed the whole time, you can use humanize. So I'll dial those in real quick so you can uh, hear what it's doing. To know what you expect out of me, especially when you act out of fear. Won't let you take it so for this particular vibe, I don't really want there to be noticeable autotune, so I'd probably leave it around here. To know what you expect out of me. When you select the key, it will automatically light up the key, the corresponding keyboard notes, um, but you can always add in some track notes by clicking here. I really like the EFX model for this. And EFX is also very light on the CPU compared to the other auto-tune versions, so it's great if you have a large session with a lot of tracks and you don't want your computer to be super bogged down. It does have numerous effects and some other things that I don't use too much, so you can read up more on that. I'm really just gonna be talking about pitch correction, but there's different uh, effect presets and things that you can use, so it does quite a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute that auto-tune, and now I'm gonna open up the full-on auto-tune pro. 
So it has uh, the auto mode and graph mode. So as you know, auto-tune is a real-time thing, so it's not really something that you can just slap on after you're done recording. You want to record through auto-tune if that's what you're using because the way that the singers are going to sing and just the way that everything's going to sound and feel um, gets altered very drastically by using auto-tune, so you can't just slap it on after you're done recording. Um, you want to record through it. So in auto-tune pro, I recommend going to this cog wheel and enabling low latency mode if you're recording through it otherwise it's going to be latency so this one has some more features obviously now you can see there's four knobs here you can switch between auto-tune mode and graph mode as well so graph mode overlaps a little bit with meldine which we'll talk about in a second but you dial it in sort of in a similar way it just has a little bit more parameters so retune speed and humanize are the same as efx which we just explained but uh, it also adds this flex tune knob which essentially will make the retune a little bit pickier about what note it's doing so it really lets you fine tune um, how intensely it's going to be tuning the notes and you also have a vibrato knob if you want to add or subtract uh, vibrato so i'll dial this in real quick to where i feel like it would sound nice for this song and uh, we'll go from there to know what you expect out of me Especially when you wait. So as you can see, when I increase the flex tune, I'll actually exaggerate it first, and then I'll dial in for the song. To know what you expect out of me, especially when we dial up the flex tune, it gets a little bit more picky about what it's uh, tuning up. So you can really fine tune things, but I don't want there to be a huge amount of pitch correction on this particular example, so I'm going to turn these way back. To know what you expect out of me. Especially when you act out of fear Won't let you take it out, out on me Cause you're not even here Cool, you can enable classic mode too, which will get rid of flex tune, so that's just, it'll just replicate like the older auto-tune models. You can mess with transposing and detuning, and there's quite a few other things here you can do, but the next thing I wanted to focus on was the graph mode. So when you go to graph mode, there'll actually be nothing here, and what you have to do is you have to track pitch and time or pitch, so you select one of the two, then you play it back, and it'll scan it, and what you do is you press this make notes button. Um, but I've already done that in advance, as you can see, it's populated all the notes here. And we have numerous tools here, so what we can do is we can um, fine-tune all the exact notes and the pitches and how much vibrato you may or may not want on any of the notes, so it's super useful. This has some overlap with what we're going to be doing in Melodyne. And I just wanted to talk about it because I think Auto-Tune Pro is really powerful. Uh, a lot of engineers are using it not just to do the real-time thing, but you can also use the graph mode. I would say Auto-Tune is unique and really excels at the real-time pitch correction because I think that's what really makes it stand apart from Melodyne. But at the same time, you do have the added flexibility of being able to use graph mode if you need to sort of surgically edit certain notes. So it's very, very powerful in that regard. So that's Auto-Tune. The one last thing I just wanted to note is that your pitch correction plugins should be the very first thing in your chain at the track level. So you don't want to put it on auxes or buses, you want to put it directly on the vocal track, which should be a mono uh, track. And just for the purposes of this demo, just so you know, I, I have Melodyne and two auto-tunes going at once, just so I have them all loaded up and I don't have to keep um, you know, loading them up for my browser. So next we'll start talking about Melodyne, but the main takeaways about auto-tunes, that's more of a real-time thing. You can use it for live and studio. You wanna be tracking through it if you plan on using it. You can't just slap it on afterward. And you wanna make sure it's the first thing in your plugin chain, not on a group or anything. It needs to be on every individual track and same thing with Melodyne. So when we're using auto-tune, it's nice because you can do songwriting and tracking and stuff like that and really not have to worry too much about the pitch correction. The singer can kind of just relax and write the song and it'll just tighten everything up. It gives it kind of that like keyboard or synth sounding feel to the vocal. It really tightens up the pitches. Whereas with Melodyne, it's more for detailed editing once we're already done tracking all the vocals and you need to go in and edit individual notes and little things like that. So we'll get into that now. All right, so here we are in Melodyne. So what I've done already is I press this transfer button and played the song, and what it does is it scans audio. The super cool thing about Melodyne is uh, some DAWs like Pro Tools and Cubase are now offering something called ARA support. 
And it's just a feature that let, that integrates Melodyne with the DAW, so you don't even need to open it up as a plugin. So it's super cool if you're using Pro Tools Cubase, um, I believe Studio One too. So definitely look into that. Melodyne is a graphical situation, and it's not in real time. So like I said, you have to scan it first, and then it shows you these little blobs. So you can see the notes that the that the vocalist is hitting, and you can see their vibratos and the timing and all that stuff too. So this is more of like an after the fact type of editing tool that you would do once you've recorded the whole song and written the whole song and all that. So I prefer to do this once we've officially decided that we're done writing and recording the vocals. Otherwise, it adds a lot of work. There's numerous tools here that you need to learn how to use, but I can just show you a couple things that are super useful. So obviously, this main tool does a few different things that is very um, helpful. And uh, one thing that you need to understand about Melodyne too is there's a pitch modulation and pitch drift. It allows you to edit both of those things. So pitch modulation is like vibrato and pitch drift is actually more of a long uh, thing. Like uh, if, if the singer doesn't have that correct technique and the pitch drifts over the course of time, it's sort of more of like a long change in um, pitch. It allows you just formants and it also allows you to adjust sibilance, which is super, super useful. And I'll get into that in a minute. So there's a couple different tools that you need to know how to use. You know, I'll edit a couple notes and just let you see how that sounds. So for example, this is why I was saying that you need to have like some basic keyboard skills and music theory skills, because we, you can see here that we see the notes of the keyboard. And if I wanted to no. make this no. a little bit more in tune, no. I can, I, I'm holding down option no. and just dragging this up. You can also double click and it'll snap it into place. So if I want to snap these notes into place, one common misconception about Melodyne, I, I would really, um, caution you against like selecting all and doing a macro adjustment to everything. Melodyne's not really like a slap on and just all of a sudden everything's pitch corrected type of situation. You really need to go through and do everything manually. It's very detailed, detail oriented and Melodyne does a very bad job. Also the voice is just such a complicated instrument. It doesn't really do a great job of scanning everything. So I would not put my money on any of this being 100% right. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in a second. So we, we adjusted some of these notes here. To know what you expect. So as you can see right here, he changes notes, but Melodyne didn't even really uh, register the change. So if you double click slightly above the blob, it will let you differentiate this note. So that gives you more control. To know what you expect out of me. I'm not gonna fully Melodyne this whole thing for the purpose of this video, otherwise, you know, we'll be here for a little too long, but I'm just gonna change a couple notes here. I'll show you how to use this sibilance tool, which I find very useful. So if you click this, we can switch to sibilance. So you can see sibilance here because it, there's dashed lines here, and we can turn that down manually, which I find extremely useful. You can also adjust amplitudes as well. So like the actual volume of notes. Um, it, actually, you just hit this for the amplitude tool. So like if this word is a little too loud, you can turn it down or you can turn it up. So I think that's really awesome. And yeah, so those are the, so splitting notes is really important. Um, understanding how to move them around so you can hold option to, to free it from the grid or just double click to snap it to the particular note that you want that it's suggesting that it should go to. Um, but that might not be right every time. Um, but a lot of times it is, but you know, sometimes you just need to understand like what note the singer's really meant to be hitting or what note you want them to be hitting and you might have to manually adjust it to, uh, to, to hit that. And then the next thing that's actually really important is if you hit this uh, modulate the pitch tool, it will let you, you have to kind of go to the, put your cursor sort of in between or like on the edges of the notes, but it allows you to adjust this um, curve that will scoop into the next note either uh, faster or slower. So that's a really important feature to know about that I never really learned about until I read the manual, but check that out. So you can, you can change the scoop speed when they're switching between notes. It's like a ramp. Um, so that's useful to know about. And uh, the sibilance tools right here. So those are the main ones that I use. And yeah, I caution against doing like a whole, you know, because the first thing that I feel like everyone does when they get Melodyne is they grab everything and then they want to just uh, press this macro button and, you know, adjust all the pitch centers. I really don't think that works well. It doesn't scan the voice well enough to do that accurately. And part of the joy of using Melodyne, I think, is really only editing the things that need to be edited and leave some stuff natural. So that's part of, of just learning how to use this. It's like, what do you just leave as is? 
whereas you know and then figuring out like what actually needs like a little bit of work a little bit of help so those are the things that i wish i knew about earlier i love melodyne i and i, I use both autotune and melodyne so i'll just show you real quick we can have melodyne first um, some people might do this the other way around but i've definitely seen producers doing this a lot especially for like modern pop we have melodyne first to make like the really small adjustments like for sibilance um volumes and things like that and just making sure all the notes are perfectly snapped where you want them and then once your melodyne's good to go we can throw autotune right after so autotune kind of gives it gives the vocals uh sort of the vibe of of like maybe more like a keyboard where like every note is is allocated to a certain key so it kind of makes it sound a little more robotic but it, but if you use only a little bit of it, it it can really tighten it up and just makes the vocal sound a little bit more like a synth it can sit a little bit better it sounds a little more modern so I'll use a little bit of autotune after Melodyne, so I would have it really like dialed back. Um, so that's just one tip about getting like a really polished vocal if you're trying to do that and you are willing to you know spend the money on both Melodyne and autotune. But I think you can get fantastic results with one or the other. All right, my name's Lucas. Thanks again for watching my video. If you found this helpful or not helpful, definitely leave me a comment and subscribe. And let me know what you guys think because I really want to just keep making better and better and more useful videos. So I really hope that it was helpful. You can uh, go, if you go in the description, I'll leave links to my website. You can read the article that corresponds to this video as well if you prefer to read it. And also I have a bunch of free downloads for some of my other videos that have like drum template mappings and things like that. You can get all that from my website for free. So thank you guys so much again and let me know what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video later. Mm -hmm.